Connecting your MCU to AVZ serial port may not be the available choice you have in order to get your system log messages, especially when you are doing RF communication tests in the field. So there should be a solution for that, right? In this video, I'm using ESP32-S3 to interface LA66 LoRaWAN module and print the system log messages on 1.9 inch display with the help of LVGL library. I have then developed my code in order to get information from the logs that I am receiving to show a simple user interface. We are going to take things to the next level today, so without any further ado, let's jump on in. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is not only a professional and high quality printed circuit board manufacturer, but they also have CNC cutting, 3D printing, metal sheet fabrication, and injection molding services. So it's the right choice where you can get all your project components from one single place. And they are now having discount on four layer and six layer PCB manufacturing. So don't miss your chance. All right, so this is the hardware that I will be using uh, during this video. As you can see, I'm using here T Display S3 uh, from Lilygo, uh, and I'm interfacing over UART uh, this LoRaWAN module LA66 uh, from Dragino. And now the module is scanning for uh, a gateway in order to connect to. Uh, and now the received messages over UART uh, are printed uh, on the screen as you can see here but unfortunately since I don't have a gateway uh, this uh, module won't be able to connect so for this tutorial I will be using ping pong example uh, developed uh, for ASR uh, chip the one that used by this module ASR6601 as far as I know so I can let two modules communicate with each others uh, so yeah let's load that uh, firmware to the module and see how it goes all right, so I've just loaded the ping pong example to the LoRaWAN module that I'm using here, uh, LA66 uh, from Dragino, which will allow the module to send uh, LoRa messages over 868 MHz to the surrounding modules, just like the one that I'm having here that acts as a USB adapter. And all the communication over uh, radio frequency is reported over UART, you art to my MCU that I'm using here. I'm using ASP32S3, uh, which is interfacing this display, 1.9 inch. And I'm going to show the RSI, the Received Signal Strings Interface level uh, over this uh, LCD, and the communication status, which will indicate if the communication over LoRa is ongoing or it's timed out. So let's test this module and see the result on the screen. All right, so now I'm going to connect this module USB adapter to a power bank to start the communication over LoRa. So now the communication will be initiated. Uh, now the modules are quite close to each other and you can see the communication has started. Uh, the RSI is full right now because the modules are quite close together. So now I'm moving it far away from uh, this module right now. Putting my hand on it. Put it back again and as you can see the response is uh, quite fast right now uh, so now if i plug this off in order to stop the communication let's see what's going to happen you can see the status is going red this means that there's no more uh, packets are being received and now the communication has stopped completely all right that was a quick demo i've actually done an indoor test so I took this module and put it in other room where there are walls and obstacles uh, but the communication continued uh, which is good uh, but still uh, I need to do a long range test in order to see how far can the communication go of course I will be sharing with you guys the test results uh, so stay tuned for that now let's have a look at the logs uh, printed by the LoRaWAN module using this uh, serial port app on an Android phone uh, of course, I need to plug in uh, the module I have to the USB port, just like this. Okay. Okay, let's give permission. 
Uh, so now let's start uh, receiving the logs. Okay. Uh, let me, yes, so now let's have a look at the logs printed. Uh, now, the, as you can see here, the communication is ongoing. As you can see here, a pong message is sent, then uh, a ping message is received, and here are the RSI and SNR values. And again, after that, a pong sent, ping received, pong sent, uh, ping received and it goes uh, just like that so there's one more thing I forgot to mention here is that I've added the feature of browsing uh, the pages on the screen by pressing this button uh, here I'm printing the logs received by the Lola one module over UART uh, and I can go back again to my interface so regarding the interface that you are seeing right now I've used square line with LVGA library uh, in order to use this interface it's quite easy to deal with it, to change the values, change the color of some objects. So now let's jump into the code and see how everything works together. Alright, so here we are with the sketch running on the ESP32 S3 microcontroller. So first of all, we see the 1.9 inch display is initialized with the LVGA library. I've talked in details uh, about this topic in a previous tutorial. You can have a look at it uh, from the card shown above. GPIO pin configuration is done over here. I'm only using uh, this uh, to initialize the onboard button uh, to browse between uh, the screens of the TFT display. Uh, and then we have the UART configuration. Here are the settings used to interface the uh, LoRa1 module, LA66. Uh, and then we see the UART driver is installed uh, with the pins. As you may know, the pin selection for UART driver uh, is dynamic so there is no restriction for selecting specific pins so we are good to go here thanks to GPIO max feature of ESP32 so here I'm using pattern detection interrupt I'm going to use this in a future video so let's skip that for the moment and here we have the UART task event uh, this event is triggered every time uh, UART FIFO is loaded with data received from LA66 module uh, and depending on the interrupt type uh, an event is executed so this one uh, will be executed when a packet without problem is received so this interrupt type is quite similar to uh, idle line detection uh, so the data is received and packed inside the FIFO and when the UART RX line uh, is idle uh, this event is executed this is quite similar to STM32 where we use such feature uh, with DMA uh, so the other events are FIFO overflow, uh, buffer full, uh, pattern detection. As I've just said, uh, I'm going to explain this in a future video. So let's get back to our main. So the task we were talking about uh, is created uh, in the main. We see here are the tasks that we are using, the LVGL timer, which is necessary for the LVGL library to keep running. UART event task, the one that we were talking about, and here is the system logger uh, where I'm uh, printing the log messages to the 1.9 inch TFT display. So we see here our system logger task uh, is started and once a packet of our UART uh, is received, this part of the code will be executed. Uh, the buffer is loaded from the UART uh, task and then it's passed uh, to be printed on the screen using uh, LVGL uh, messaging uh, interface. So let's have a look at this log printing method in the LVGL user interface layer. And we can see that part right over here, yes. Uh, so a label is created in page two uh, and then it's aligned to be placed in the top left of the screen. And then an event is uh, created so uh, whenever a message is passed, uh, this callback will be executed uh, in order to modify this uh, object. And then we subscribe to this message uh, in order to modify uh, the object that's carrying the text that is going to actually show the log message. So now let's have a look at the callback function, what's happening inside it. We can see that a pointer to the label object that we had created is passed through this uh, callback uh, to a local uh, pointer and then the message that we are sending uh, from the main layer is also stored and at the end of the day uh, the label is modified with the data passed over the message that we had sent from the main layer just over here 
here we have the uh, message ID that we are using in order to send data so yeah this is how it goes and the rest of the task uh, is used in order to interface the ping pong example of LA66 module where I've used uh, square line in order to create uh, the interface that I've used I'll be talking mo in more details about square line and how to integrate it with your code uh, so you can use it with your TFT in a future tutorial uh, so stay tuned for that all the materials used in this video are shared in my github repository that's linked on the video description below so check it out this brings me to the end of this tutorial if you have learned something new please like the video share it among your friends and tell them about useful electronics stay tuned for the upcoming tutorials and bye bye